It's 21 minutes after 2 o'clock. Welcome if you've just joined us here on the Midday View on ENCA DSTV Channel 403. Now, Lee Matthews' father says family will oppose a parole bid by her murderer. The 21-year-old student was kidnapped and shot dead in 2004 after a ransom was paid for her release. Donovan Moodley was convicted of the murder. Linda Gutekulu attended a briefing hosted by the family uh, this morning. Linda, good afternoon. Welcome to the Midday View. Well, we're seeing now another layer in this case of the Lee and Matthews murder case. What happened today? Take us to tell us. What did the family say? Well, another layer, Pratan, as you say, to a story that sent shockwaves in 2004 when uh, uh, Lee uh, was, in fact, Lee Matthews was kidnapped and then ultimately found to have been shot four times and killed. And today we are hearing from the family, which was with the Women and Men Against Child Abuse organization, but they're basically saying that they've gotten wind and they've gotten word that uh, uh, Moodley will be, in, in fact, applying for parole. There is a process that is currently uh, happening where he is ap applying for parole. So they are saying that they do not want anything to do uh, with Moodley. They do not want him to be out. So they have uh, expressed that they want uh, to oppose it. They have acquired the services of uh, an attorney from Women and Men Against Child Abuse, uh, basically saying that uh, they need help in ensuring that what they got as justice, which is a life sentence and an additional 25 years of, of extortion as well as kidnapping, they want that to remain intact and Moodley uh, to actually serve his time for killing, kidnapping as well well as extorting money from the family of Matthews. But let's perhaps take a listen to uh, Rob Matthews' father, just giving us a sense of what they had about the case and basically slamming uh, the Department of Correctional Services, saying that uh, uh, this is not justice if they are expected, in fact, to undergo this period, to undergo this difficult time again of ensuring that the killer of their daughter must remain behind bars. They run the risk of making the parole process a revolving door for criminals because, again, as Luke said, where do they get the tick in the box to show that they have done their jobs? It's, it's, it's a little bit, in my opinion, like the poacher being the game warden. Where are the checks and balances? Who's actually making sure that those people doing the evaluation are doing those evaluations for the right reason? Where's the objectivity? Where is the check and balance that takes place. So I suppose if I'm going to make criticisms, then we need to make some recommendations as well. And I'd like to see a scenario for the voiceless that says they are interested in any parole hearing that comes up for the criminal or the prisoner that has affected their lives. Make that as the default standard. Why should it be that I have to communicate with correctional services, get bounced mails, find it impossible to get hold of somebody? How so is somebody in a rural area going to make that connection? It should be the other way around. It should be deemed that those people who have been impacted by criminal activity, that they want to be part of a parole hearing. It should not be the other way around. Rob Matthews, the father of, of Lee. Now, you said that uh, the women against, uh, an organization that's against women and child abuse mm. has been assisting them mm. up to now. Uh, going forward, do we know what their role is going to be? Well, they did say that the intention is to actually oppose this parole. Uh, they will be writing to the Department of Correctional Services and reaching out to the Minister, uh, Ronald Lamola, in terms of making sure that this does not happen. The Minister and of Justice. The Minister of Justice, that's mm -hmm. Ronald Lamola. But basically saying that they are opposing this. They will be helping the family uh, through uh, Peter Van Nicker, uh, uh, the attorney, to just make sure that uh, the, the, what the wishes of the family of not having a parole for uh, Mr. Moodley is something that's going to be expressed to all of the people they're reaching out to. Uh, so, but their I issue as well is that as an organization against women and child abuse, uh, they are certainly not uh, for releasing Mr. Matthews, saying that the track record shows that he's not remorseful. He hasn't told the family exactly Re Releasing what Mr. Happened. Moodley. You, Mr. Moodley. That's what yes. you meant to say. Yeah. Yes, that's what I meant to say. Yeah. So basically saying that he hasn't shown remorse and he has been trying uh, for about three, four times to just get out of uh, a jail, uh, try to have a pre-trial at some point and appeal uh, the, the sentencing. 
thing. So at the end of the day, they're saying that he's not a person that's demonstrated remorse. But let's take a listen uh, to some of their intentions as they had laid them out to us in that earlier press briefing. When we look at the scales of justice and the idea that justice is blind, we feel that our presence is essential in this debate to tip the scales where correctional services are promoting the rights of their inmate without due regard for the victim, in our opinion. We are here to add weight to that voice. And in conclusion, we just want to make our final point very clear. None of us as citizens made a social contract to participate in a predetermined process that releases murderers and rapists who are not rehabilitated nor remorseful back into our communities. I didn't sign up for that. It is not for the murdered families, the murdered victims' family, to show the reasons Mr. Moodley should not be released. It is for him and correctional services to show why he should. Okay, that was not the attorney as we expected, Peter van Niekerk. That's somebody called Luke who's part of that whole family, family set up. But in all of this now that the family has come out to say, hey, we're smelling, right, a little bird has whispered in our ear that there's a parole thing coming again, an attempt by, by, by Donovan Moodley, and we're going to oppose that. Mm -hmm. What has the Correctional Services just de Justice Department said? What have you picked up? We've just gotten a response from them about this whole uh, process. Uh, an official from the Department of Correctional Services, in fact, just sent a voice note and a statement basically confirming that there is no uh, parole application, there is no uh, parole uh, um, uh, undertaking that is currently happening. No parole him. hearing currently. So they are saying that he's still serving his life sentence and ultimately still needs to serve uh, the 25 years for extortion and kidnapping. So at this stage, it does seem that they are not confirming that there is anything such as a parole or talks of parole at this stage. So they are saying that from their side, they haven't heard of anything like that. But if there should be something like that, that would be announced by uh, Minister Ronald Lamula in terms of whether something like this would happen. And that's a decision. They and say one would hope the from. family would be informed that there's an upcoming parole application again by Mr. Donovan Moodley. That's right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kabash. Lindo Gushe Kudu there, just wrapping it up for us here on the Media View.